And also they fail to understand that since 1970 that the, un that the influx of immigrants in this country has gone up 400%. 400% in 35 years. Now statistics show us that for every 10% increase in immigrants coming to this country, it reduces black folks' income by three-tenths of one percent. And so now we've had a 400% increase in, black, in immigrants since 1970. What that did in effect was wipe out all the economic gains of black folks in the civil rights movement. That when, the, when the civil rights movement started at that time, the, the blacks ratio compared to whites in income was 54 cents on the dollar. During the course of the black civil rights movement, the black income of black folk went up 12% by 1966, but it went up to 66 cents on the dollar. By 1976, when you started bringing in the immigrants, it began to drop. Now black income, proportionally speaking, compared to whites, is back to where it was before the civil rights movement started in the 1950s. And nobody cares you give them the passing laws, bringing in more people, reducing them more. You bring in, you took, the, the, the new immigrants came to this country, they take the blacks out of the affirmative action program. Affirmative action was supposed to be corrective action. So they corrected for things that government did to deprive a specific group of people of the rights and opportunities of this society. It was not supposed to be for any and everybody. It was not supposed to be for any, for Arab, Asian, health blacks, uh -huh. and everybody. So it was a black woman. Not at all. Not at all. And it, they use these very broad terms and watered the whole concept of minorities down, of, 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 of affirmative action down, and made it for everybody. And now the whole issue, rather than focusing on the needs of black folk, they talk about these very broad, ambiguous terms like minority, multicultural, diversity, poor people, people of color. has nothing to the world with the major problem in society. you got racism coming out. And you're going to have race problems if somebody doesn't go back and focus on going back to those laws in this country, the 1866 Civil Rights Law and the 14th Amendment, and protecting black folk, it's totally in a protected class. You're not supposed to pass laws that continue to subordinate, exclude, and bury them in the society. And yet this country is operating on a policy that Nixon put in place in 1970 called the 9 elect pretend that black folk yes, don't exist. Yes, yes. And what we are here today to say is that they do exist. Yes, yes, they yes. do exist. And now you, and then these immigrants have displaced blacks in income. They've replaced black folk by coming in and taking over all the jobs and the businesses. They've come in and taken over affirmative action programs in this country that was designed for black folk, rather than Texas, where our president is from, in 19, in, I think in 1990, 1997. At that time, at that time, that the, in, in state contracts in the state of Texas alone, white women got 78% of the contracts, Hispanics got 21%, blacks got 9 tenths of 1. Wow. Somebody better wake up and start focus on these problems. And right now, what the Congress is intended on doing is illegal and unconstitutional. And our organization stands and gets ready to file a major lawsuit to impede it.
And they use the flimsy, uh, the flimsy excuse that black people won't work for these jobs. Pay us a living wage and we will. Look at that. 
It will not be just bad. You might think, look at what is going to happen to African Americans, but I'm here to tell you that this is going to impact everybody. Yeah. And our children and our grandchildren will look back and say, what happened to the leaders? That's right. Someone asked the question, why is it that African Americans have been so silent? Well, I want you to know we have not been silent. But we have not been the Jesse Jackson. We have not been the Al Sharp. So the media have not picked up our views. So we are here today to say we are opposed to this. And if you really want to know, you can ask the massive people in the street. They are opposed to this because they realize the great impact that it would have. So what we are asking our Congress to do, to enforce the law, because I believe you well know how to enforce the law. And my blood boil every time I think when someone asks the question, what shall we do about something illegal? 